Hey guys, so today I'm going to be recording the NFL free agency recap. Um, we're going to go through each team, go through all the moves, and I'm going to grade them based on how well they did on the free agency, in my opinion. With that being said, let's go ahead and start. So Arizona, Devontae Canwell agreed on one year deal worth 8.5 mil according to his agent. Um, he's, I heard, is a pretty good running back, so that's cool. Uh, Kenyon Drake was placed on the transition tag, and the running back signed the tag on March 21st, so he will be remaining a Cardinal one more year. He did a lot better than um, David Johnson, which is why David Johnson will discuss why David Johnson is no longer there now, and he's probably going to be the feature back, which was a good decision. <coughs> Larry Fitzgerald re-signed with the Cardinals with a one-year deal worth $11 million with incentives. Uh, that's a pretty good move by them. I mean, it's Larry Fitzgerald saying, you know, humble and um, loyal to the team that he's been with since his career started. This will likely be his last year. I'm glad that he didn't have to leave this team. Uh, I'm not a fan of Arizona, obviously, but, you know, still pretty cool. Marcus Gilbert re-signed with the Cardinals one year deal with 3.75 mil. <coughs> Offensive linemen in general are pretty important especially if they're good ones like Gilbert was I think he was a former stealer too so that's pretty pretty big here's the big one DeAndre Hopkins was acquired via a trade with the Texans with a fourth round pick in exchange for David Johnson as well as a second round pick and a fourth rounder next year uh, that's the big trade and that's the big what the hell trade so far this offseason um it came out of nowhere a lot of people including myself believe it's pretty stupid you basically traded a superstar wide receiver, top five in the league, for a declining running back that hasn't done anything in years. But who knows? Maybe maybe he will produce. <coughs> Devin Kennard, uh, he's a pretty good linebacker. He signed a three-year deal worth 20 mil with 12.25 guaranteed. He must have been pretty good to get that type of deal. Um, wonder if it will pan out for him. Who knows? Finally, Jordan Phillips. Um... The Cardinal defense in general just needed to sign better players, so I think signing half their signings basically being defense and the other half being offense is actually pretty good by them. And then a Falcon, uh, Tyler Davison was signed for a $12 million deal or three or for three years, uh, 4.5 of which would be guaranteed. Falcons, once again, are a team that needed defense. Dante Fowler was signed to a three-year deal. He was a former Ram, and I think he was a Jaguar before that. Um, so that's pretty good. Running back with uh, Todd Gurley, one-year deal worth $6 million. Um, he received a bonus, even .5 mil from the Rams, and there is a $2.5 million offset. In total, Gurley will make $11 million when he plays for Arizona or Atlanta next year. And finally, Hayden Hurst acquired in a trade with the Ravens, along with the 2021st or fourth round pick in exchange for 2020 second and fourth round selections. That, I believe, is a pretty good trade for them. I mean, the Ravens have pretty good tight ends all around. I think they had like three or four pretty good ones along with Hayden Hurst. So it's kind of good he traded, they traded him. I'm pretty sure he's only like a second or third year player, too, so he's still pretty young. Uh, Baltimore traded for Calais Campbell, like that defense needs to get any better, right guys? With the Jacksonville Jaguars in exchange for a fourth round pick, that's really weird. And then they finalized a two-year deal with $27 million, which has 20 mil guaranteed. Uh, he's an old player, but he still produces really well. I think he had like eight, six or eight sacks or something like that last year. Matt Jude on the edge was placed on a flat franchise tag, so they're keeping their defense together. Matt Skira, the team, placed the original or original round tenure on the restricted free agent. If another team signs him, the, uh, the contract of Baltimore can match said contract. The Ravens will not receive any compensation, so that's pretty bad. Uh, Jimmy Smith, the corner, signed for one-year deal worth six mil, or re-signed. Uh, Warward agreed to return on a one-year deal, the team announced. Uh, Derek Wolf was signed for a one-year deal worth three mil guaranteed and up to six mil with incentives, according to Ian Rappaport. So as you can see, the Ravens just beefed up their defense even more so than it already was and didn't really do anything to their offense, which is really weird. But hey, that's their decision. Buffalo Bills. Okay, so so far, 
let's say Arizona, I'm going to say, gets a B or an A. Atlanta definitely gets a B. And the Ravens, I think, get a C because they didn't really need defense all that much. Buffalo signed Mario Addison, three-year deal worth 30.45 mil. Pretty good edge rusher. And then they signed Ver Ver Vernon Butler. The Bills are on a two-year deal, 18 mil, with, nine, with basically a little over half of that guaranteed. He's a pretty good D-tackle. Uh, he's pretty good in run defense. Stephon Diggs was acquired in a trade with the Vikings. Uh, that is immediately makes the Bills an A for the free agency because they needed a premier wide receiver, and they acquired one. EJ Gaines has agreed to a deal. Quinton Jefferson, ADE, signs. Josh Norman. Oh, Josh Norman. I didn't hear about that. Josh Norman agreed to terms on a one-year deal worth six mil with eight in incentives. Quinton Spain and Daryl Williams, both linemen. So Buffalo gets an A just because of Diggs. If they didn't get Diggs, they probably would have had like a B minus C plus. Carolina signs Robbie Anderson, which I, I guess they needed. Trey Boston was a pretty good uh, safety last year, so that's a pretty good pickup. They did sign Teddy Bridgewater to probably be their new franchise quarterback. Three mil deal was sixty three mil. Um, Faro Cooper, I don't even know who the hell that was. Uh, Seth. Deval, which I believe was a tight end in either Patriots or Pittsburgh. I'm not sure which. A guard, a left tackle who was who was traded for, from the Chargers. And basically they gave Trey Turner to the Chargers in return, which is a pretty even trade. Seth Roberts, wide receiver. P.J. Walker, who was the XFL Probably MVP if the coronavirus didn't hit. And by the way, after this video, I'll probably be recording and posting another video about the coronavirus coming up sometime this week. So stay tuned for that. They signed a Stephen Weatherly, which was pretty good, and Tahir Whitehead, which is still, even though he's a little bit older, is still a good linebacker. So Carolina, I believe I should give a B plus, A minus. Chicago signs a corner, a safety. They trade for Nick Foles. They signed Jimmy Graham, Gio Effetti, Robert Quinn, and Danny Trevathan. So they keep the defense beefy. They acquire Nick Foles probably to challenge um, Mitch Trubisky for the starting job. And they signed Jimmy Graham, which they didn't really need. So Bears get a C-. minus. Bengals sign a corner, um, a safety, place the franchise tag on green. Got a D tackle and DJ Reader, Von Bell, McKinsey, Alexander, it's Trey Waynes. So they signed four defense, one offense. They didn't need their off or defense to beef up, but they didn't really help Andy Dalton much besides keeping AJ Green. So Cincinnati says around a C plus B minus for me. Cleveland acquires um, Andrew Billings, who's a pretty good player. Jack Conklin, who's one of the better tackles in the league. Linebacker Goodson, pretty good player. Austin Hooper they signed, which is a really good one of the top like five tight ends I think last year. Running back um, Kareem Hunt, the team plays a second round tenure on him. They got jo jo John Jovanovic. I don't know who the, who he's from, but I remember mention hearing his name quite a bit. They got a corner in Kevin Johnson, Carl Joseph, safety Case Keenum. They agreed to a three year deal and Andrew Zendejo. So the Cleveland Browns, I'm going to give them a B this offseason. They weren't as splashy this year, but they definitely still covered some holes that they definitely needed to cover. Dallas sound, signed Brown, HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, Amari Cooper, Kai Forbath, Blake Jarwin, Sean Lee, Joe Looney, Gerald McCoy, Don Terry Poe. They franchise tag Prescott, Darren, Darren Thompson, and Greg Zerline. So Cowboys, I will give a, I'll give them a B plus A minus. I think they could have done a little bit better, especially since they signed two fucking kickers, which doesn't make any sense. So I'm actually going to give them a solid B. Denver acquires AJ Boye in a trade. Jarrell Casey they acquired in a trade as well. Offensive guard Graham Glasgow. 
four-year deal. Melvin Gordon, the former Charger. Shelby Harris, Sam Martin, and Nick Vernett. So Broncos, I'm going to give a C. They did some pretty good moves, but nothing super splashy. I, I would actually say maybe a B because of Gordon. Detroit picks up Jamie Collins, Chase Daniel, Darren Harmon, Jaron Jer- Curse, Miles Killebrew, Reggie Ragland, Danny Shelton, Desmond True Font, Vitae, and Nick Williams. So they actually made their defense a lot better. And they got some. I mean, they got an offensive tackle, which they needed in a backup quarterback. Pretty good. Uh, so Lions, I'll give them a B. Packers pick up Christian Kirksey, Devin Funches, Mercedes Lewis, and Rick Wagner. I'm going to give them a C. They didn't really do anything splashy, but they did pick up some probably pretty big needs for them. Houston Texans get Randall Cobb, Kermai Fairbairn, Darren Fells, Philip Gaines, Vernon Hardgraves II, David Johnson, which I acquired in the trade, obviously, A.J. McCarron, Eric Murray, Brett Oval. Bradley Roby and Jalen Watkins. So they it looks like they beefed up a lot of their defense and added some pretty good offensive weapons to replace the weapons they lost. So I will give them a B. Indianapolis get Buckner, Costanzo, Clark, Rhodes, and Rivers. Um, they didn't really need a lot on either side of the ball. They just kind of got you know better D tackle. And they picked up some offensive line to help protect the Rivers. And they got a new corner, which I think they actually needed one because a lot of their corners were either slow or old. So I'm going to give them an A. Jacksonville get Tyre Eifert, Gunter, Melvin, Yonan Ngakwe, Joe Schobert, Tyler Shatley, and A.I. Woods. So the Jaguars beefed up their defense once more. But they didn't really do much to help um, Gardner Minshew. So I'm going to give them a B. Kansas City gets Hamilton, Henny, resigned, Jones, Ro- Demarcus Robinson, resigned, and Damian Williams, who picked up the option for 2020. Chiefs really didn't have any holes, so, I mean, they had needed some defensive help, which they really didn't do yet, but they're probably planning on drafting young players on their defensive side. The now official Las Vegas Raiders, by the way, Chiefs, I'm going to give them them. I'm not going to grade them because they didn't really need anything. Las Vegas picks up Nelson Aguilar, a.k.a. Brickhands, Eli Apple, a.k.a. Burt Toast. Uh, Malik Collins, pretty good. Jeff Heath, one of the okay safeties in the league. O-lineman, Cush, don't even know how to pronounce that linebacker. Corey Littleton, who was a Ram. Marcus Mariota, who will compete with Derek Carr if not completely take over his job. Kalni Sepa DE, and they signed Jason Witten. So Vegas, I will give them an A. Chargers pick up the old tack offensive tackle, Brian Bulaga, one of the better tackles in the league. They keep Eckler. They get or Harris from the Broncos, basically kind of like them getting him for Gordon, more or less is what that feels like. Hunter Henry got franchise tag. Linval Joseph from the from the Vikings, and then they got a guard. So they addressed their line, which they needed to. They kept Eckler, which they needed to. They got another corner since they did have a lot of injuries at that spot last year. They kept Henry for another year, and they got another D-tackle to, I think, replace Meebin because I think he left. So Chargers, I'm going to give an A- minus to. Rams got Blythe, Brockers, Floyd, Robinson, and Whitworth. I'm not going to grade them because I'm not even sure what they needed. Miami actually did quite a bit. They got Colbert, Flowers, Gruger, Hill, Howard, Jones, Karras, Lawson, Ogba, Roberts, and Kyle Van Noy. So they made the, the defense a lot stronger, which they needed to do. And they did pick up some weapons on offense too. So I'm going to give them a C. C or a B. Vikings got Abdullah, Bailey, Ham, Harris, Hill, Mannon, Pierce, Sharp, and Wilson. So they covered some holes. I'm going to give them a B, maybe a C. Patriots, a.k.a. the destruction of the Empire, 
Allen, Bayard, Hoyer, McCourty, Phillips, Slater, Tooney, and Vital. So, I'm going to give them a C. They didn't really do anything splashy. Um, Breeze and Hill. Breeze is staying. Hill might leave. Who knows? They did get Jenkins from the Eagles. On um, Mata? Cool. Pete, Emmanuel Sanders, and DJ Swearinger. So, I'm going to give them an A. The Giants, Bradbury, Edgar, Farfin, Fleming, Lewis, Blake Martinez from the Packers, David Mayo, pretty good player, Colt McCoy, good backup, and some tight ends, and uh, Williams. So, I mean, the Giants had a lot of holes, so no matter what they did, they were still going to have holes leading into the draft. But considering they did fill a lot of them, I'm going to give them an A. Jets got Andrews, Desir, Fant, Jenkins, Lewis, McCovern, on on the Warsaw, Brashad Perriman, Brian Poole, and Greg Von Roten. So as far as the Jets are concerned, they did need some help on defense, which it looks like roughly half their signings were, and then they need some wide receivers and offensive linemen, which they did get. So I'm gonna give them an A. Philadelphia now gets linebacker Joe Davis Brown, good pickup. Nose tackle Javon Hardgraves. They needed that to pair with uh, Fletcher Cox. Rodney McLeod keep your safeties in house because they kept Mills and Parks as well they got they signed Parks but they kept the other two they already had they picked up Coleman and Slay which they needed corners Nate Sudfield re-signed with the Eagles to be their backup so I'm going to give them a B- Pittsburgh keeps Bud Dupree signs Eric Ebron signs Derek Watt a former Charger Chris Romney and Winsnowski. So they really only re-signed like one player and they picked up five, four. Pretty good uh, offseason for them. So I'm going to give them a B. San Francisco get Armstead. They keep Armstead, get um, Travis Benjamin, re-signed Garland, re side Ward. So they really only brought in one player. So I'm going to give them a D. Seahawks signed Philip Dorsett. Acquired Dunbar, signed Finney, second round tenure on Holster. Bruce Irvin is expected to sign with the Seahawks, so he's not signed yet. Aguagak, I don't know. I agreed to terms with them. Greg Olson, new signee. Jaron Reed. Pretty good for the Seahawks. They, uh, they got some help for Wilson, got better blocking, and did pick up some neat pieces they needed on defense, so B+. Plus. Tampa Bay gets Barrett. Obviously, Brady was the big signing here, which I'll have a video on that at some point. Hogg, awesome. Mentor, Pierre Paul, Smith, and Sue. So they really didn't do a lot, but they did pick up Brady, even though I don't like the guy. I have to admit he's still a great, good, good to great quarterback, so A+. Titans pick up Vic Beasley. Derrick Henry gets placed on franchise tag. Offensive tackle, offensive guard, and Ryan Tannehill. So, A for them. Even though they didn't really sign super, you know, amazing players. They signed what they needed. Washington gets Kyle Allen, acquired in trade with Panthers. They keep, or they signed running back Barber. Sean Davis, safety. Thomas Davis, who I believe was a charger. They got Kendall Fuller from the Chiefs, Cody Latimer from, I think, the Cowboys, J.D. McKissick, who who knows, Kevin Pierre Lewis, who knows, Brandon Sheriff from the Redskins, which is, they actually resigned, and offensive guard. So they, I'm going to say, got a B. So overall in free agency, I think most teams got either what they need, what they desperate, or what they wanted, or what they desperately needed out of free agency. Some people just didn't really make any super splashy moves. Some teams, I don't think, did anything. But I think free agency is pretty odd this year because, you know, you're signing all these contracts and stuff, and we'll touch base with on this more in the coronavirus video. But with that being the thing, and right now a lot of uncertainties, I wonder how this is all going to play out. Like, if the season doesn't start, do they just push all the contracts back a year, or how does that work? You guys let me know in the comments what you, how what what you think of the free agency signings. I think everyone did pretty damn good. Um, 
There's only one I rank lower than C minus. Most of the teams, I think I could even tentatively give them like half grades higher or lower, if not full grades. Right now, I'm just looking at stuff on base value from the knowledge I do have of the players that were signed and all that stuff. So don't act like all well, because I said your team did meh or whatever. Don't get offended by it. I'm just doing it based on what I know. But thank you guys for watching this video. Um, if you liked it, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.